Hey guys, Michael Abraham here. My nickname is Wajang, but my closest friends call me the Iguana Whisperer. I'm teaming up with the Iguana Man over in Florida to import iguanas from Florida into Trinidad. When I was a kid, a guy once gave me an iguana as a pet, and I swear to you, to this day, that was the best pet I ever had. This is my son Julian. My parents always taught me to love, appreciate, and coexist with nature, as well as to respect the wildlife and their environment. And I would love for my kids to do the same. Thank you, Uncle Vish. So here we go okay, again. so back to the purpose of this video. I've done quite a bit of iguana removal, relocation and release. And I've also been following the problems that have been going on in Florida, Puerto Rico, and the Cayman Islands with respect to iguana population concerns. And it's so ironic because right here in Trinidad, we got the opposite problem. Iguanas are now a protected species due to their rapid decline in population, mostly due to the lack of sandy soils for laying their eggs, as well as from overhunting, both during and out of the hunting season. In my lifetime, I've seen our local porcupine as well as our local red rocket deer become endangered. And I do not want to see the same thing happen to the iguanas. Okay guys, so here's how I see it. According to recent research, humans have cleared out over 80% of the world's forests to date. And that number is increasing. That is crazy in my opinion. No wonder the iguanas have no other choice but to eat our crops and ornamental plants. Even though iguanas are deemed invasive in some countries, everything and everyone is invasive in a way. We gotta take the good with the bad. Aside from being able to feed a bunch of hungry people, iguana meat is actually prized as being medicinal and good for the human reproductive system. Not like we need any more help with overpopulation. Iguanas also disperse seeds and forest plants with their feces, as well as control overgrown vines that often smother trees. Aside from that, they actually make some people happy with their friendly and curious behavior. It just so happened that Raj the Iguana Man reached out to me on Facebook to see if we could import iguanas from Florida into Trinidad to help resolve their issues as well as create balance. So I went to Florida this one time and I saw this huge fluorescent, iridescent, blue and red iguana on the side of the highway. And I thought I was seeing things till I went up on Instagram and did some more research on the varieties. And then I found out about Tom Crutchfield as well as a couple other breeders. And I was amazed to see what these guys were doing with iguanas and the type of results they were getting. And that was when I found the Iguana Man on YouTube. Today's episode of The Goanna Hunter. Luckily, to this day, we have linked up and we're going to try to make this possible. Okay, so side note, even though I mentioned all these cool varieties, it is very important that we do not change the breed of iguanas that we have here. So, stay tuned. I know this, but look at the advice I'm about to get. Okay guys, today I'm getting ready to go into the Forestry Division Wildlife section here in Trinidad to find out more details on how to import iguanas from Florida into Trinidad. Let's see how it goes. Good day, I'm calling to find out who I need to speak to about something like importing iguanas from Florida into Trinidad. Right. Okay, thanks a lot. Farm road? All right, I'm gonna head across there now. Thank you very much, bye. Okay, so what the lady on the phone said is that I gotta go in, fill out a form, and um, the people who have to review it will see if it's possible or not. So let's go, let's get going. Oh, cool. 
right? Yeah, they have to ask it. Okay. So, here, you have a oh, right, a three point, a three, a three month period that's supposed to be here. Right. This is the country or the business place and address. Right. Okay. 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 She gave me a phone number to call back. So I need to call back this person later to give them the details as well as to find out more. And then I gotta fill out this form. And I'm gonna submit this separate form as well as POP. And apparently, when you import any animals, they have to go straight from the plane to the veterinary clinic for quarantine. So I'm going to go ahead and try to organize that as soon as possible and yeah, let's see. So the next step is to call Anna, which I will do for you guys on speakerphone. Just going to make a quick stop in St. James to get my iguana some food as I rushed out of the house and didn't walk in anything today for them. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Singh doesn't work on a Monday or a Tuesday, so in that case, I usually go right there to that little shop and get some vegetables. It's in the middle of St. James. Okay, so I was told by Shelly Ann to call Anna after 12 p.m. It's now 12 or 8 p.m. I'm just preparing a couple of questions for her. One is, well, the reason for import. So our reason would be breeding and conservation so i would also want to ask you if i'm doing something out of goodwill and conservation if it's possible to get government assistance hello Christine. hello is this anna no she's not in at the moment okay i'll call back later thank you you'd like to leave a message sure um could you tell her to call michael at okay. Yes, yes, from Shelly Young. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. To Trinidad. Okay. And my first question was basically, um, well, the reason for import is for breeding and conservation. And I was basically wondering two things. One, the possibility, like how possible is it to get through with something like that? All right, and if it is something for okay, it's the first time. All right. All right. So, so once I fill out the forms, um, I drop it back to you all there in Farm Road. All right. Nice. Um, okay. All right, and then from there, I will get a call back. Okay, th okay, thanks a lot. Sorry, y'all, I wasn't expecting her call back so soon. So I had to switch phones and stuff. I wasn't really hearing what she was saying too good because there was a lot of noise in the background, as you guys heard. But um, one thing that stood out to me was that no one has ever done this before. So I thought that was pretty cool. And yeah, let's start the process to try and save some iguanas. So I have an idea. Um, I know through experience that if you're starting off something you're not sure about, the best thing is to always ask for advice from people who may be familiar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the El Socorro Center for Wildlife Conservation and see what advice they could give me. Let's see how this goes. Hi, good day. I was calling to find out some information or to get some advice about something. Well, I saw you all once in Long Circular Mall, you all had an expo there. And um, I think I took down your number since then. Okay, so this guy I'm on the phone with, his name is Ricardo Mead. I was really impressed with how much he knew about iguanas. And he's an advocate for wildlife here in Trinidad and Tobago. You know, I'd love to team up with him one day. The conversation on the phone was way too long. We spoke for like half an hour. 
So I gotta cut out the conversation because you guys are gonna leave the video. You'll get bored for sure. So here are the key points. The first most important point is not to change the breed of iguanas that we have here in Trinidad. We have certain problems with um, the iguanas in Florida. First you have to do due diligence and check and make sure it is exactly what we have here because now you risk hybridizing or creating a new species. Right. The second point was to set up breeding enclosures which he described the specs to me. He said you could have more females in there and just one male because if you have more than one male, you'll get fighting. Right. Yeah, I have some pretty good um, video footage from right here in Woodbrook where I have a few of them. I wanna show you, man. The third point he suggested was just to do it all with locally bred iguanas. But um, the really bright green adults are really hard to find. Obviously because they are spotted and hunted first. I also want to help save some of the iguanas in Florida. So I'm going to stick to what I'm doing. He also suggested that Tobago, which is the island next door to us, has a really nice breed of iguana. A bright, beautiful green. That's my buddy Kiwan, by the way. So yeah, I might look into getting some from over there also. And we definitely have an issue with our wildlife here in Trinidad. It's very sad. Yeah. Well, look at the Wildlife Association of Tobago also. The iguana is there and they're very much concerned because they're so serious decline in iguana population so they're now very much interested in breeding iguanas also the Tobago Wildlife Foundation is currently working on a project to increase their iguana population as the numbers have dwindled drastically the fourth point he suggested was to beware of larceny and theft because people here would risk their lives to catch an iguana they would come in your property they would trespass they would do anything they could. Okay, once people know you have iguana there, if you go on there, they don't get it. Three to five hundred dollars, they come in for that. Correct. That's easier to thief. Easier for them to thief than iguana than the thief can go to. Alright, so uh, good luck for your project. Like I said, you can give me a holler at any point in time. Definitely. Thanks, Ricardo. Alright, not a problem, man. You have a great day. Yeah, bro, you too, bye. Alright. Okay, bye. That was cool. Nice guy. I'm very excited because my neighbor where I work, Fish, just called me to say that he spotted some baby iguanas. Right there on the Noni plant. We get very few survivors, but it's always great to see new life. That's cool. Oh yeah. Hey guys, I'm here filling out all the forms and I'm chatting with the iguana man on Facebook. Basically trying to get all the information I need from on his side. Uh, they want to know the quantity we want to bring in and I'm thinking of starting kind of small with like let's say around 10 just to make sure things run smoothly and most importantly to make sure they arrive here safely. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, so I'm going to get it and drop these things off first thing in the morning. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Friends for real. This is how I feel I will leave a door, I'm not gonna be open But I give thanks to who close them Because I know I'm a try harder Me I tell you, say I know I'm a try harder To all of the enemies to force them I was a drink and make a toast to them Because I know I'm a try harder You know I'm a try these are youth from the streets We know about the white race right, We know type of me Everyday poverty pull up like it So just wait for the call, right? And, and from there I guess I'll ask a question Thanks a lot, bro I'm a group with no sweet One pants, one shoes Every day I'm used to pay So no judge has a chain Prince to it So I'm going to head back to work Pay guns are to leave Power leap a door We knock on them not open But me give thanks to who close them Because I knew me me try harder Right, back to work. So now we await the phone call. Right. Guys, sorry about that. That timing was terrible because my other phone died just as I was trying to record the phone call. So Mr. Mahabir called me. And what he was saying is that I have to do a proposal because they are concerned about introducing a foreign species to our local wildlife. Um, I need to do more research about 
the species in detail, crossbreeding, all that sort of stuff. And they want to see evidence that if we do it and we start it within a controlled environment. Like I said, they sounded concerned about releasing foreign species into the environment. So, this proposal is going to be a challenge. Oh, let's see how it goes. Okay, so I've done a ton of research on this topic and there are many different subspecies of green iguanas and many morphologies of iguanas. But I'm just gonna keep it simple. Basically, we want pure green iguanas with no rostral horns and no red on them. These are a few green iguanas caught by Jessica from Iguana Solutions in Broward County, as well as Fort Lauderdale. So far, they seem to be identical to the ones we have here. Raj, bro, I just want to say thanks for reaching out to me. Um, I wish we could save all the iguanas, but I know that's impossible. And let's just do our part to make the world a better place. We need to share the planet because we're taking it over. If you or anyone you know could help us out with this process with respect to shipping rates, approvals, anything, share the video or please let us know. We also have a donation link as well as a Patreon link in the description below. And we could use all the help we could get, not just for this project, but also for other rescues. Thanks.